Dory Johnson said, relax and enjoy it. And that, I think that sort of sums everything up because you have time to enjoy the things that you haven't got to before, the spending new time with friends and making new friends. So that's, that's it. Good. Meredith? I'm Meredith Pritchard. Um, I worked at Mayo for about 28 years as an RN and retired in 2009. And it doesn't seem like that long. I don't know where those years have gone. But um, I have been married twice and divorced twice. <clears throat> and that's kind of hard to say, but that's the way it is. And um, my first husband and I had three children, and we the three still live fairly close. I get to see them fairly often, and I have four grandchildren. Um, and then I was married again in, in my, um, 85. You, some of you know, knew John Pritchard, and he um, asked for a divorce in 2014. So I feel like my retirement kind of got derailed um, along the way. It didn't turn out the way I thought it would, but um, I think and in some ways, I can look at it as a blessing because it's made me more um, aware of how how much meaning I found in church and the friends I've made here and choir friends and uh, my circle friends. And I didn't belong to a circle till after that. So um, it's retirement is. I thought it would be just something that would happen and it would be static, but it's like you said, it's always changing and. Um, and I guess that's good. I'm glad to be able to to say that. that I'm enjoying having time to read and play my piano and travel. Um, so, and my granddaughter was helping me. I have a 21 year old granddaughter, and she said, "Granny, maybe you could say that it's um, given you time to um, have the independence that you want to spend time with family and friends." And I thought that was a good way to put it. So. Yeah. Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Don't shoot us all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bill Harlitz. Um, yeah. yeah. um, I, I retired, my first retirement was in 2002 when my employer, federal government. Right here. Right here. Is it working now? <laughs> that reminds me of the time that Lester had me go up and acolyte and light the candles upstairs. And he said, no, you light the advent calendar closest to the lectern. And he tricked me, he didn't put a candle in there. <laughs> As I said, I, my first retirement, which I flunked, was in 2002, um, where there was a downsizing the federal government, and they wanted to get rid of the uh, old baby boomers, and, and uh, so they gave us incentives to retire. Um, that was not good, because my youngest daughter was just starting college, and that really didn't work. But I had an acquaintance in the banking world who had recruited me to join the state of Minnesota, which was going to be about a two or three year opportunity that ended up being 10 years, which I commuted back and forth to St. Paul every day for 10 years and gave me a lot of windshield time to think about retiring. So the second time I retired was on the 29th of January, 2013. And if I'd retired on the 28th, it would have been too soon. And if I had retired on the 30th, it would have been too long. So I was really fortunate to be able to pick a good time. And the reason why one day would be too short and one day, the other day would be too long is I had rebuilt the staff. We had just completed the last bank failure during the Great Recession. And they were, a new day was coming forward, both with the political administration and changes. So it was really a good severing point for me. Three days later, I was called by a local bank and said, how would you like to come to work for us? <laughs> Which I said, 
I'm not really that eager, but I'd like to do something. And so I flunked retirement the second time, but only for part-time. And I've been on the board of directors of Premier Bank since then, and I, I still work part-time. Um, I think the thing that retirement has, in a way, made, made me a little bit selfish because I value my time more than I ever did. And uh, I like to do things on the spur of the moment. Sandy and I decided at the end of August last year we were going to go to Europe for a month, and so we two weeks made an arrangement and went. You know, and where do you get to do that when you're raising kids? You just don't. And and as far as Rochester is concerned, it's really exciting to be watching what's happening here, to be a little bit part of the business community with downtown development be a part of the Zumbro community looking at a exciting project on doing something with this building in our ministry in downtown Rochester and having that vision and seeing that kind of excitement has really, really been fulfilling. Thank you. <clears throat> Let me ask each one of you uh, how much time you put into planning for retirement. Mm -hmm. Meredith, you want to start? <laughs> I thought about it a long time, actually. Um, well, I think probably, seriously, about a year. I mean, we had been putting away money for a long time, so we knew, <clears throat> I knew that money would be okay, and I was feeling like it was time to retire as far as my nursing career. I was feeling kind of burned out, and like it really wasn't as fulfilling. I wasn't sure I was doing the best job anymore, although my lead nurse said I was. But, um, As yeah. it turned out, uh, yeah. was, your, was, your retire was your planning realistic? Yes. Mm -hmm. Bill? Yeah, I don't, I don't think I ever really planned it other than probably the financial piece. Um, it, uh, it was just time, <laughs> you know, and, and and I look around and, and see members of the congregation, and so many of you were mentors as to what retirement meant. And it didn't mean stopping something, it meant growing something and moving towards something. So it always was the next adventure. I've always just looked at it as an adventure, not an end for the beginning. Well, I guess I'd have to say I always planned on retiring, and I planned. Uh, to do it early enough to enjoy the years I had left, the um, working at Mayo, I was part of the pension part that after 30 years, you know, it was sort of time. So I had sort of planned on, you know, looking at where things were financially after 30 years. However, Somebody decided that I didn't get that opportunity, <laughs> which was dis disheartening to begin with. But after uh, what what had happened is that was the time when Mayo was going through a lot of reorganizations and things like that, <clears throat> and it was very upsetting. But in, it didn't take me long to decide it was a blessing. Because <clears throat> I think like Marilyn uh, said, I was sort of at the time, at the point where I could retire. And I did end up going back part-time, working for another company for about a year. The hardest part of retiring at that point is that I all the other people that we hung around with were all still working. And I was retired. I had time to do things. The blessing in that is I got to meet a whole new group of people <laughs> and enjoy that uh, involvement. In my uh, work at Mayo, uh, we used to joke that some of our doctors spent more time planning for a three-week vacation than they did for retirement. <laughs> I think that may be true for other people, too. Uh, 
people, uh, any people fear retiring, uh, having depression or a longing to get back to work? Uh, how do you feel about that, Bob? Um, well, I guess I didn't fear it because my dad retired and he actually retired early and he enjoyed the retirement so I guess I sort of took a book page out of his book and decided that that would be work for me too then. <laughs> uh, I didn't fear it. No, I, I was looking forward to it. Um, I didn't I didn't plan on going back to work. My my new supervisor asked me if I wanted to come back and work some supplemental time when I was leaving, and she said, you know, you could have any hours that you want, and so I said, well, let, give me a month and I'll let you know, and by that time I knew. <laughs> yeah, I, I was fortunate because I seemed to, and I think everything you do prepares you for the next thing you do. And, you know, and I had to think of, you know, I had a lot of windshield time commuting to St. Paul, and and I was getting, you know, it was getting tiring, and, and the challenge was kind of missing. And in, in my three episodes of dealing with, I mean, everything gave another opportunity. And it seems like when you get an opportunity, all of a sudden you just get energized. And you get energized in a different way. And, uh, I mean, like now, I'm as energized to go to a meeting that I enjoy from the business world, but Thursday or Wednesday morning coffee with organized by Claire. He's our CAO, self-appointed organizer. It sounds like he works here in that way, but, but there's, you know, there's anywhere from eight to a dozen, 14 of us that gather for coffee and we do it high V North now and solve the world's problems and it's been, it's an amazing group. Exercise plays a role in uh, many people's lives. Uh, do people uh, subscribe to that? Has that been an important part of your uh, Speaking for myself, yes. Uh, part, partly because I have the time to do that. And partly because shortly after I retired, I had a heart attack and sort of forced into <laughs> doing that. Uh, because I have a wife that wants, for whatever reason, wants to keep me around. <laughs> oh, I like to exercise. It's just hard to make myself go as regularly as I should. But I, um, I think it was in the fall of 2014, I signed up for a class at the Healthy Living Center for active older adults. And it was wonderful. And um, really got me on a good path for doing things that help as you get older like balance so you don't fall and, um, and I met a good friend there who also had been a nurse at Mayo and retired and talk about that now this is straight from the subject about deciding to move why don't you wait. go right ahead yeah, please okay. um, my friend Meg and I decided to both sell our houses and well we first went for about a year looking around at different places to move um, this was in 2015 I think 2016 because I moved last year. Um, I knew that I didn't want to stay in the house after three years of taking care of it by myself, and it was too big for just one person, and um, at that time, Homestead was building new apartments, senior apartments, and uh, she was in the same camp as I was. We decided to sell our houses, and we each signed up for one of the new apartments and moved a year ago, April 6th. So. Um, I know it's not for everybody, but it sure was a good idea for me um, to not have to take care of the house anymore and not have those responsibilities. Um, it's allowed me to have time to travel, and I've made new friends there. And it's just a great, great place. So if anybody wants to talk to me about that, you sure can. <laughs> I'm an advocate for moving before you need to and being able to choose the place you want to go. Um, and I did it partly because my mom had dementia, and I think it started in her late 70s, probably, and 
I'm 71, so, you know, I wanted to be able to be in a place where I knew I could move down the line to assisted living or memory care if I needed to be in that situation, and I would know the place I was going and not be like my mom who had to be moved and she was not happy. So, so I figure it's a gift to myself and to my children. Bill uh, hits a long golf ball, I know. Mm -hmm. Does exercise important, Bill? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. <laughs> prior, prior to December 20th, 2015, exercise consisted of golfing and, and walking. Sandy and I have always been walkers, and so, you know, we thought relatively fit. But then, as some of you may know, I decided to have a heart attack at the Festival of Lessons and Carols. And I never do anything small, so I just said, let's try to get one that'll put me down permanently. And fortunately, I was close and had some Zumbro angels shepherd me down to the to the lab and got my hard working again. And uh, follow up said, you know, you've got cardio rehab, and so I started that. And I've now been at it. I did my 100th cardio rehab last week, and I basically have been between a treadmill and an elliptical machine, I run three five Ks a week, and lifts weights, so. And it's working, my cardiologist told me she wanted me her patients for dec be her patients from decades, and over Sandy's objection, I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> when I retired, uh, my wife was considering retiring at the same time. Can you hear me back there? No. No? No. Here? Here? Okay. Okay. Pardon me. Uh, my wife and I uh, considered uh, whether we should retire at the same time. And uh, she initially said, no, she was going to continue to work. She was, she's young, much younger than I am. And uh, so that's the way it was until the weather got better. And we, she started thinking about catching walleye. And I would be catching more walleye. So she retired at the same time. Uh, it had pluses and minuses because uh, nobody knew whether to congratulate her or me or both of us. Uh, but we, we've had a nice retirement together. How did retirement affect your marriage? And I apologize to you, Meredith. Uh, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. Well, it's, it sort of sounds like uh, my retirement is the same as you guys, as, as our retirement. We, uh, I was going to be retired and we always had read that, you know, you shouldn't retire at the same time. So Carla graciously said that, you know, she'd work for a couple more years, you know, to Tied, tied things over. Well, I retired in June, and by November she had retired. <laughs> I, I think it was she didn't trust me home alone. Well, I guess I could go. I, I'm sure my wife has a different opinion on this than I do. She seems busier most days than I am. And uh, when I, the first time I retired, I was off for about 60 days. And uh, I think the idleness and self-worth was kind of impacted at that time. I knew I was going to work again in late November, but I had a September to November period where I was just kind of, I'd been getting up to work for 40 years and 40, you know, I had no place to go. So that was a little bit hard, but, um, I know you can just kind of get into it, and, and uh, I think relationships grow. 
Well, Sandy retired surprisingly prior to me. Um, she was, uh, but we have grandkids in the area, and that just, you know, that's a whole other life. Uh, you can comment if you wish. Yeah, well, um, just I'm just going to say briefly that I had retired first. I'm I was John was two years younger than I, and so he decided he'd stay working and. So he retired in 2011, and I, mean, I have always enjoyed doing things with my friends and people that I've worked with. We still got together, and you know, I joined a circle, and um, so I always had things to do. And and he seemed like he had a struggle with retirement um, more, so he didn't have friends that he did things with, and um, didn't want to go out and do things. And so I think it was harder for him and. That's not what caused our marriage to falter, but um, yeah, it was it was a tough time. It was an issue. It was an issue, I think, um, for him. I think he felt, as he said later, I feel like you just pushed me to do things, and um, I didn't see it that way. But that's that's how he did. So yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you have to push. Yeah. yeah. And I'll just say briefly, some of you know this, but he ultimately was diagnosed with dementia and um, is in a memory care unit in Madison now. So I think some of that was going on at the time, and neither of us knew that. So. I guess I would, I would just add that from what everybody said, it, it, it takes work when you both, when you're a, have a relationship and you both retire because no matter what type of work or at home each person had a period where they had their things to do and when you're more or less together 24 hours a day it it does make a little different you have to realize for the other person and set things that you do probably by yourself or you can't expect uh, a partner to do everything you want to do because for years they didn't. Uh, I, I, can we hold the questions until we're just about through? Thank you. Um, yeah, having time for joint activities, but allowing time for individual activities, I, I think is very important too. Uh, <clears throat> as I've grown older, uh, and time has gone by, I've rediscovered that uh, retirement's a process. It's, it doesn't happen at one time. Uh, people who re have retired recently, people who have retired recently talk to me about going on trips, uh, being very active, uh, etc. I'm, I'm more interested in slowing down at this stage, having done uh, the tra traveling, a lot of traveling, and uh, see retirement a little differently. Uh, is the process evident to you, Bob? Have you gone through a process in your retirement? Yeah, I, I think so. I think. Uh you under well to be honest when when we first retired because well I went back to work for a while but after I was but it was only part time and when I finally retired from that job we were both together and it took a discussion together of where that where you go and you need a little time by yourself I was, when I was working, I didn't have, I spent a lot of hours at work, and so when I retired, I thought, well, you know, I can help out more around here, which I found that I didn't need to help out as much as <laughs> I was trying to do. So I didn't, she didn't really need my help, I guess that was, that was uh, So, and, you know, as the years go on, go by, I have, you know, I think we've found a happy medium, and we've found new things are coming up, and now that 
we're getting older and probably the traveling is slowing down a little bit and you want to spend more time uh, just relaxing and having time. I mean, the biggest thing that I have enjoyed in retirement is having time to do some volunteer work, do things that I never could think of doing while I was working because I just didn't have the time. It's sort of following that axiom, you, you learn, you earn, and then you serve. And we're more in that, I'm trying to be more in that serving spot now. Good. Um, Meredith? I forgot what the question was. <laughs> process, process of uh, in retirement, things change? Yes, well, definitely it has for me. I feel like there have been some stages to mine, and I feel like retirement sort of really started after my divorce in 2014, where I've, I've kind of had to grow on my own and learn how to take care of everything, the finances, the, the house when I lived there, um, selling a house, I'd never done that before, moving by myself, so some of that was all new, but then um, I've, I'm at the point in my life now where I want to travel. I haven't hadn't done a lot of that before, some, but you know, so now I feel like I have the time to do that and I'm looking forward to that and so I know it's a process. It's a yeah. yeah. I mean I don't I don't feel much of a process other than things change like when you have an illness like I had, you know, you get a wake up call and I mean I'm kind of sitting what I call my bonus years and I think I had two granddaughters born during years I shouldn't be here. It's just exciting. But I think the thing that was the most important to me is that I knew it at the time, but every year that goes by, I find out I married my best friend. And that we enjoy the same things mostly and we give each other space. And, and, and we've become very spontaneous. We're both interested in pretty aggressive traveling while we're able to do it. And so we're doing some of that now. And like I said earlier on, probably have become a little bit more selfish with our time. I think I was busier here when we had three kids in school <laughs> than I am now. But I figure, you know, you can't pay your dues along the way and you, you can be a little selfish, but that's kind of the way I looked at it. We've, we've been able to backpack around Europe like a couple of college kids and what could be greater than that? Good. Uh, let me, I'll ask him one more question and after that uh, we'll take questions from the audience. Uh, we're all church members, uh, importance of uh, religion in your life now, or for meaning, meaning in your life? Uh, well, I've always, I mean, it's always, religion's always been part of, part of my life. Probably the thing as far as Zumbro, it's been the people here and the things that they've helped that I've been able to get involved in. And because of, I'm, you know, sitting up here is hard for me. <laughs> I'm a shy person. Some people may not believe that, but <laughs> uh, so I had a lot of people that are members of the congregation help get me involved in different things. Uh, I got involved in Habitat for Humanity because of one of the members here. You know, we, Chuck Johnson has tapped me for a lot of different things, which I appreciate. And a lot of other members, you know, Claire and stuff have got me involved in things. <laughs> And that has really helped as far as the other section, I have had more time to get involved with Bible studies and etc. So I have been real helpful. Okay, Meredith? Yeah, that, I would just pretty much echo what Bob said. I feel like it's it's the time that you have that allows you to have that freedom to do things within the church. It's not just coming to church on Sunday anymore. It's 
you know, like Chuck helps us get into the gardening. We, you know, I have a little pot that I take care of out by the columbarium and um, circle once a month and being involved with the Francis House that we help support. And, um, I feel like it's allowed me, um, well, I never used to do my own devotions and so that's something I have started doing and it feels good to have that space that I give myself in the morning to do that and gets my day on the right track. No. I, I, don't, I don't think my faith life has changed. I, one of my favorite characters is Tevia from Fiddler on the Roof. And in later years I found out that my father's grandparents were very likely Jewish refugees, so it, it put more meaning into that. But you know, I you know, Tevia is, you know, he's always having this onward dialogue with God every day. He said, God, I know you made me poor, it's no great disgrace, but it's no great honor either. <laughs> and and I remember Pastor Holden leading a series in the Search Bible Study on the laments. And I really, you know, you think about Job on the ash heap, and you think about the laments, and then also the celebration. And I've always felt that you, it's just an ongoing dialogue. You know, the, the theme, My God and I, it's, it was a camp hymn growing up, and I think that's what it's always been. So there's a, there's a shadow right next to you all the time. And, you never know when it's going to pop up and you're going to need it. Anna, do you have a question before? Do you still have it? Uh, do you want to ask? You don't know me not to speak. <laughs> um, I heard reference from a, a couple of your comments. Um, it makes it begs the question to me, um, having gone through a, uh, a corporate world moving down to Rochester to get married. I was younger, I was 45, but I started working independently and it, it matched a little bit retirement. I went from being single, uh, professional, established career where people knew who I was in the industry, to coming down here where I was someone's wife. And I lost my identity and I always was, was trying to say, well, don't you know who I am? And no one did and it didn't matter, but it was a very hard transition for me to be changed to, for my identity go from being a professional identity to just me. And I had a really hard time with that. Have you experienced that? Anybody? I think I did a little bit, because I, you know, I worked as a nurse for 40 years, not all a male, but, um, so yeah, that becomes, kind of who you feel you are. And when I didn't have that anymore, it was a little disconcerting, but it didn't last very long. <laughs> I, For a while after I retired, I volunteered out at Seasons Hospice for almost two years, I guess, until I got divorced. And then I just couldn't do it at that time, and I kind of quit that. But So that filled the gap for me a little bit. I, <clears throat> I was used to being called doctor. And uh, I missed that for a short time. Now I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> uh, either of you question, well, comment I, on identity? I've not fully lost that professional identity. But I do remember a little bit of a story that's similar to that for a younger age person that lost a child to a backyard pool drowning when they were young. And they were moving and that person had said to Sandy, I'm going to go live someplace that nobody will know I ever had a child. And that was at someone who was a 20-something, so that's pretty profound. And I think that's that happens at any age, and it's hard to deal with. You just got to get engaged, I think. Um, I think I had a little bit of that because, well, I was 58 when I retired, which there wasn't any other my age that were out there that were they were all working so they went to work every day when I talked to them you know met you know on the street or in the store they were talking about what was going on at work and I didn't have that I, I mean because I enjoyed I enjoyed the work that I was doing but luckily 
I, there was enough people around that were willing to help out and uh, my wife keep me on the straight and narrow. <laughs> yeah, another part of identity that was a little difficult for me initially was being called senior or aging or old. And George, I wasn't, you know, at that time. Now it makes no difference at all because I'm old. <laughs> other comments? Um, my spouse here. Nancy? Oh. <laughs> uh, when I retired, that was uh, an issue, myself, my identification with my job. But I solved that by asking Bob, telling him I expected him to stand up whenever I came in the room. <laughs> <laughs> she backed down uh, as far as me calling you your honor. <laughs> I, I have one comment. If okay. I just thought of, you know, the, there's one big problem that I've found in retirement that I just can't get my head around, and that is you can never take a day off. <laughs> there are no vacations. No vacations. Other comments? Questions? Comments? Somebody must have gotta be some someone. comments. <laughs> Just wondering. Yeah. Wondering if there's anyone. Wondering. Wondering if there's anyone in the room that is thinking they aren't going to be able to retire. I think that's, you know, no one needs well, to say it, but yeah. it's something we haven't I mean, really can, covered. Oh, <laughs> at least what I have found, that what, what they've told you as far as financially what you need isn't, you don't need all that much because Things, things seem to work out, it, and you don't spend all the money that you did while you were working. But another hard thing about it is you spent all that time, you're saving, putting away for retirement, and then all of a sudden, you're not doing that anymore. And you think, I must be doing something wrong. In some ways, it's hard to take that money out and use it too. I feel like it's—I mean, I feel like it's a balancing act. How do you know how much you're going to need for how many years? You know, so it's—you just have to be careful with it. And um, I talked to Tim Moline here, some at church, about it when I first needed some advice. And to find people that you know that you can talk to, have a financial advisor. I mean, the key is starting early, but I, I like to, you know, we've heard a lot of this lately that Social Security is going to be gone and we're going to be broke and, and everything else. And I like, sometimes we need to separate political agendas from what's really true. And we get caught up in rhetoric that, that speaks to an agenda, doesn't necessarily speak to what's going to happen. And I think you plan. We all, you know, the greatest generation faced a lot more hardships than my generation did, and and look what they created. So I think that we need to use what God gave us between our ears to think and plan. And I think that I'm not worried about the future. There's there's people that are so much brighter and more talented than I am that they're going to solve these problems. And uh, that's my answer to that. Other comments? Yes, right on. I think our society puts so much emphasis on youth when the wisdom lies with our elderly. And I'm wondering, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, um, I'm wondering if outside of perhaps your grandchildren, have you found ways to share your wisdom with the youth today or our young adults? Good question. 
I, that's something I feel like I wish I wanted to do. You know, it's, I kind of feel like you, Bill, but I'm, I'm feeling a little selfish with my time, and, and yeah, I know that there are programs like you know, the elementary schools need people to come and help with reading, and so that's something I'm thinking about doing. I think at Homestead they have a program where they have asked if people want to do that, they'll provide the bus ride over to Gage, I think, to do it. So that's on my back burner. And then I signed up to help with the Winona nursing students last year. I didn't do it this year, but so that's sort of a way, but it's not really the younger people that I think could use some help, too. In a sense, uh, uh, <clears throat> you have to have an opportunity. I don't know if the opportunities are there that could be there. Yeah, that, uh, uh, retirees are invited yeah, to uh, participate yeah, and, uh, and speak I mean, from their own standpoint yeah. and wisdom. Uh, those opportunities might be more I've worked with some financial literacy program where we tried to bring literacy, and I was working at the time, but trying to bring literacy into the school system. And, uh, you know, with young people, teach them how to balance a checkbook, thing, how to use a debit card. That it, just because they gave you a card doesn't mean you can use it every day. And um, we found out that the ones that needed it more were the teachers. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not disparaging anybody, but it was true. I, uh, we didn't realize how in-depth the problem was, because they don't teach it in college either. And financial management is uh, sorely lacking. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank the uh, panel for uh, telling us some of their experiences.